Экскурсия, которую вы сегодня видите, была записана уже не один и даже не два года назад по заказу английской школы, которая попросила меня провести, соответственно, тур для студентов. И я задавал им очень много вопросов именно по просьбе, собственно, организаторов всего этого мероприятия. Возможно, в какой-то момент я переусердствовал, каюсь на самом деле, но я к тому, что не удивляйтесь, и я об этом там говорю. И, ну, эта экскурсия не методическая, хочу сразу же сказать, это экскурсия авторская, тем более там огромное количество допущено э, всевозможных ошибок э, орфографических, э, грамматических э, и, и так далее. Грамматических, конечно, прежде всего. Вот. Ну, а тем не менее, как бы можно заиметь представление как о Петропавловской крепости, так и о том, о чем я иногда там рассказываю. Хотя, конечно, обычно я еще там касаюсь темы терроризма. Ну, в общем, приятного просмотра. Well, first of all, do you know when Peter the first wanted to build St. Petersburg in the first place? Where? 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 There. Yeah, it's a perfect answer. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nobody knows, yeah? The city of Taganrog, have you heard about it? Well, actually, I'm sorry for my strong, awful Russian-American accent. Maybe you, you know, used to, you know, beautiful English pronunciation with an open mouth. Well, this is not the case. Sorry, guys. Actually, I, I do a lot of mistakes, and I don't care too. Okay? You can correct me if you want. Uh, so, no, the city of Taganrog in the south. Show me where is the south. Hmm? Locals. There. Yeah? So where is the West? No. Ah. Mr. from Kostroma. <laughs> where is the West? Guys, come on. No. If the South is there, where is the West? How do you learn English? <laughs> there. Why is it so important for us at the moment? Okay. Uh, well, Peter the first wanted to build it in the south, in the first place. The end of 17th century. <laughs> nice try. Icebreakers. Icebreakers? What icebreakers? He didn't have any icebreakers. Icebreakers. Icebreakers, yeah, in the south. Here. N n nowhere. He didn't feel anything. Okay. No one. Forget my questions. Russia was the largest country on this planet at the moment, yeah? But we didn't get to so-called big waters. What is big waters? Seas, oceans, yeah. Why is it so important to get the access to the big waters? Trading and Money. It's all about money. Din, 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 din. Yeah? Money. You don't have the access to the big waters. You don't have money. Because the cheapest way of delivering goods, what is it? By what? By helicopters? By water. By what? By ships. By ships, yeah. By water. By water. This is the cheapest way of delivering goods. Was, is, and I'm sure it will be. Well, for a couple of years at least. So, you have the access to the big waters. You have trade, you have money. You don't have the access to the big waters, you don't have trade. Or you should pay to who? Who has the access to the Well, this is my guy. Yeah? <laughs> who has the access, you know? So, in the south, we paid to who? Turkey, Osman Empire, have you heard about it? Yeah? So that's why Peter the First wanted to build St. Petersburg in the south, but he didn't succeed. Why? Because he didn't find who? Any who? Any ally? Peter the First. Peter the First. Yeah, Peter. You should call him Peter, you should call him Peter, you should call him whatever you like. Peter I, he didn't fight any ally because England wasn't interested, and France either, to fight with Osman Empire. Yeah? So then, Peter I 
came here and he decided to fight who? Sweden. Yeah. Where is Sweden? Show me, please. West. There. West. So, Sweden is there. And this territory was Sweden at the moment. The legend says that Peter I came down the river Neva, he looked at this island, which is called how? Zaichi, perfect, yeah, Zaichi. Hair. When they got American tourists show that this is a hair island, you know? So, a hair island. He looked upon, yeah, he picked it up. But in the east, there was already the city. The city, how did it call? Nien Shans. Nien Shans. He had it. So why he decided to build his city there? Well, he had already, already he had another city, Nien Shans. Perfect fortress. There is the west. There is the east. Okay. So, the city of Ninshans was against Russia. So, it's rare that looked where? To the west. Yeah? Was unprotected. <laughs> Yeah? Maybe in your heart. <laughs> no. No. So, speak loudly, you know. It was unprotected. The enemy went from there. Yeah? If we take sheep right now and go west, so what the country we will hit in the first place? Hmm? You are not of geography. Finland, Chukhlashka, yeah? This is the picture of St. Peter and Paul fortress, special for you. So you can see the orientation of this fortress. And now you get the idea why it was so important to build it. <laughs> I'd like to say hello to my ma'am, actually, yeah? No, stand here, okay. Yeah? So, they came from there. Yeah? You get the idea? So Peter needed the place to protect the entrance to this land. That's why he picked up this particular island. Now you get the idea. Now you get the idea why he decided in the first place to build city here, in the north. And now you get the idea why he, he picked up this particular island. Because the artillery of this fortress covered the whole area around it. No sheep could go through. Yeah? We're okay with that. So it was an intro and yes, you must be active, you know. Uh, we're standing on the very first bridge of St. Petersburg. And be prepared, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions, you know, because uh, uh, I can talk for hours with my perfect English with a lot of my mistakes, but I don't care. I can speak hours, yeah? The task is that you must speak too, yeah? So, we're standing on the very first bridge in St. Petersburg. Peter I forbade to build bridges in St. Petersburg. Why? The most popular question in my mouth. Because what? Problem to, for ship to go to no. To develop? Yeah, you are very close to. For protect what? For 
me from you? <laughs> no? <laughs> okay, guys. We, we already said that Russia hadn't had any access to big waters. So people were not used to big waters. People were not used to water at all, you know? All they had is, you know, was rivers. So Peter I wanted them to drive across the canals, rivers, by boats. That's why he forbade, he forbade build any bridges. But you know, it's very difficult to deliver, you know, materials to build a fortress. That's why uh, he eventually decided, okay, with this one I'm okay. They built this Ivanovsky bridge, or Ivan bridge, or call it whatever you like. Yeah, this is the very first bridge in St. Petersburg. And we'll look in half an hour at other bridges, how they looked at that moment. Now, we are going through this gate and then stand outside. Are you ready? Switch it off. So, where we are? Right there. Yeah? Have you noticed the thickness of the walls, by the way? No? Yeah. Oh, it's very thick. Yeah? Have you noticed that? Okay. So, uh, there used to be a moat here. So, we are standing where the water was. There used to be a moat. For what purposes? Protection, yeah, protection, strategic, yeah. This part is called how? You was on that embankment. K R Kronberg, Kronberg, Kronberg. So this is another protection. This part, how do we call it? across all the fortresses. It's the French word, actually. Glacis, or glacis, as you wish. So, it used to be the empty place, you know, up to Gorkovske metro station, up to Petrogradske. Yeah? There used to be a moat here, and the Swedes, they came from here, to here. Yes, so they can go along the fortress. They can go along the fortress. And whatever way they choose, they were under artillery attack. So the place was perfect. Yeah. We are go we are going now through this gate, but before we do that. Now you get the idea, yeah, that this is the west, yeah? And where is the north? No, 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 here. If this is the west? There, north? No? She's right. The north is there. <laughs> the 17th century was so-called the most allegorical century. So have a look to this beautiful bar relief. Yeah? What can you see there? Describe, please. What can you see? A lot of people, yeah. Huh? Yeah, one person. What does he do? One person. Wings, maybe. The story about what? Lucifer. Wow. No. Well, maybe you close, but no. This is Simon the Magus. Simon the Magus. Well, uh, I need to translate it in Russia. Simeon Volk. Have you heard about it? No? Simon the Magus. He falls from heaven. Yeah? And underneath, have you noticed this? person in, uh, you know, uh, Roman Empire outfit. 
the one on the left. There is a group of people on the right, and to the left, there is a person, like Emperor of Rome. Yeah, no, 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 to the right, to the guy that is on his knee. You see it now? Well, guess who is it? Oh, yeah, my guy, yes, yes, yes. I was waiting for so long, yeah. Peter the first himself. And continue your logic. Who is the guy that falls? Well, yeah, we know that he's Simon the Magus, but who is the guy? Yes, but since it's Peter the first. King of Sweden. King of what? Sweden. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Actually, he had a name. Carl Charles. Yeah. The twelfth. Yeah. The king of Sweden. So the story tells us that, uh, you know, Peter, not Peter the first, but what Peter? We live in a city, St. Petersburg, it's called. St. Peter, yeah. He came to the city of what? Of Rome. He came to the city of Rome to promote what? Religion, not Coca-Cola, yeah? Not, you know, McDonald's, religion, what kind of a religion? Catholic, Catholic, first of all. Catholic, and uh, there wasn't any Catholics at the moment. They were, how do we call it? Christians, yeah. Orthodox. Not Orthodox, not Orthodox. No, Orthodox, we are Orthodox Christians. They are just Christians, you know? It's split, it, you know, centuries later. So he came to Rome to, Rome to promote Christianity. And there was so-called Simon the Magus, who can levitate, you know, up in the air. So he was, uh, you know, quite an opponent, opponent to Peter, yeah? Uh, he got his clientele. So Peter, the, uh, the Saint Peter, began to pray and ask the God, and the God heard him, and eventually Simon the Magus falls from the heaven, and people saw that he's not a magician at all. And now they got Peter, Saint Peter. And they said, oh, Peter, you are really a magician. So he promoted Christianity. And now we have the allegorical explanation to that. Saint Peter is Peter the first. Simon the Magus is Charles the twelfth. Peter the first prayed to God. And Charles the Twelfth falls from heaven. This is the way how contemporaries at the time perceived this particular picture. And now you got it. I must confess, I have a problem. I worked as a journalist and even an editor-in-chief for three magazines and one newspaper. One of them was in Moscow. And I even interviewed the guy who did that. But I always forget his name. I don't... Huh? Yeah, Shemakin, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, we have a non-official rule for guides uh, to, if we have uh, large groups, not to get them uh, to this stage or because another tourist can see it. But you should go there, have a closer look, you know, just for a couple of seconds, then you go back. So, tell me please, what is right and what is wrong with this statue? Well, actually, your teacher couldn't get me any answer, but she's so involved in this process. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, she shows you how you must behave right now, yeah? You should get me any answer, any answer, even if it's wrong. Yeah, we... I make a lot of mistakes and I don't care. You know, guys, come on. So, what is wrong with this sculpture? Small head and big body. 
unproportional. Long fingers and long feet. Feet, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. But what is right about this? What is right? Jacket. Jacket. His head. His head. You're right. Because Schmeckin did it uh, when he was in Hermitage. There is the mask of Peter the First in Hermitage. I'm pretty sure you've seen it. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, and we are okay with his head, but we are not okay with his feet because in uh, in Russian system, he had 37 size of his boots. 37. He was really unproportional. Yeah, he was up to two meters high, and he had 37. Well, actually, my ex-girlfriend, she had, you know, <laughs> no, 38. Yeah, bigger than Peter the first, you know. But you know, it's artistic approach. Schmeckin wanted to represent it uh, like he, uh, like he, he wanted. But I think this is much more better than Peter the first by Tseretelli in Moscow. Well, it, it's in my opinion. Well, it's different thing, you know, the scale is only, I think. Well, maybe, maybe. So once again, how do we call our religion? Well, no, maybe not our, you know, in this country. Orthodox. Orthodox. Now you're right, man. Yeah. This was your big time. <laughs> so, yeah. We are Russian Orthodox. Well, I'm not sure about all of us, but as myself here, yeah, I'm a Russian Orthodox. Take a closer look to this cathedral and tell me what is wrong with this Russian Orthodox cathedral. What is wrong? Well, have you been to Yaroslavl or I don't know, to Vologda? Huh? It looks like... It's not what? It's not Kupol. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get it. Yeah, it's not Kupol. Yeah. It looks like palace. It, lo it looks like palace. Well, I'm okay with the, the idea that it looks like palace. <laughs> Catholics? <laughs> <laughs> the crest? Yeah? No, we're okay with the cross. Uh, take a look to the side, please. Windows. Big windows. Have you seen big windows in Russian after the... Oh, no, oh, yeah, no. Now we get it. How? No, it's very simple. Yeah, windows. And uh, we're not going inside, but uh, there are pictures inside cathedral. Not frescoes, pictures, you know, portraits and some, you know. Uh, have you seen any pictures besides icons in the Russian Orthodox cathedrals? No. Peter the first uh, decided to build it like, uh, you know, some building that he'd seen in what country? Germany. No, Germany. France. 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 Holland. Yeah. Holland. Holland. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the spire is uh, up to 122 and a half meters high. Yeah. Or 405 uh, feet, if you were Americans. So uh, there is the problem with the spire. Uh, it suffered damage from lightnings, from strong wind, and every time uh, the copper sheets suffered, and the angel. In 1830, this was the case, uh, there was a strong wind, and uh, several sheets separated from the spire, and uh, the angel, you know, inclined a bit. And uh, it was very expensive to repair that because of that thing. You needed to build scaffolding, yeah? We call it Lisa, and it's very funny to look 
you know, Google translation like they built forests. <laughs> Scaffolding was very expensive. Well, up in the, uh, and uh, in our days, maybe not as expensive as it was, but it, it has to be paid. So there was a guy, a poor workman, Peter Tilushkin. Have you heard about him? Peter Tilushkin. What do you know about him? In the top, you know, like inside of the tower, the, the cathedral, church, yeah. yeah. And after that, go outside, uh, yeah, with this and rope that I remember, yeah. And then you got the choir, it's, I mean, the angel. Mm, well, okay. You, uh, you tell us the story like you know, he he went to the cafe and have a couple of coffee. Oh, so. It was so dangerous, oh. of course. Yeah, yeah, it's very dangerous. Yeah, I agree with you. It's very, very dangerous. Peter Telushkin, very dangerous. You must say, Peter, he went there, he repaired the... You know, with this intonation. So, uh, Peter Telushkin proposed to our government that he uh, could repair the angel without any scaffolding. So, they found that there are two small windows and uh, he went to Belfry, Belfry, this is called Belfry, yeah, and uh, the sheets inter, uh, interposed to each other in this way, and there are uh, straight, you know, edges of nine millimeters, so he, using only two thumbs, two fingers, grab like a spider-man, you know, to the top. But there was a very, very strong problem with an apple. The angel stands on the apple, and you can't, you know, get there. So what he did? He tied him up, his leg, to one spire, then around his body, then he took a horizontal position, took the rope, waved it, and you know, like a cowboy, yeah? He, he got the rope around the angel, and he took the end of it. Yeah? You got the logic? So now he had a rope, and after that he managed to, you know, organize his, you know, uh, working place, and he repaired in two days. So it was, you know, quite a deed, I'd say. Uh, he got 5,000 rubles. It was a huge amount of money for that time. And uh, then he had another order to repair another spire, which is the Admiralty. Okay? We had only two in the center. Yeah? And uh, he ended up very, very poorly, like alcoholic, and he died in three years. Such, you know, a uh, story. But after that came the legend. Do you know about this legend? Okay. People told that, uh, you know, uh, before the revolution, uh, vodka uh, was a government business. So if you want to buy some drink in bars, for example, you should go and buy it in the so-called kabak, and that was a government business. According to this legend, Tsar gave Peter a sort of diploma or certificate, and by showing it, he entered all kabaks, showed it, and said, oh, I'm the guy, and they got a free vodka. But he lost it, and then he came again to the Tsar and said, you know, I lost it. The Tsar said, okay, we'll manage it. And he got him a kind of, you know, brand here. And then Peter came to any kabak to make such a jest. So look what I have here. And he got free vodka. But this is the legend, you know? You don't believe in it. 
And it emerged because of what? Because he died of alcoholism. That's a true story of our very smart guy who managed to repair this spy without any scaffolding. And now we know only that he was Peter Telushkin at all. Yeah. So, uh, about the uh, cathedral itself. This is the burial place of all emperors of Russia, except two, Peter II and Ivan VI. All the rest, I mean not Tsars, emperors. Starting with who? Peter I, yeah. And up to who? Nicholas II. Very simple. They all buried there. They all have similar tombs, except two, Alexander II and his wife. Tomb of Alexander II was made uh, of green jasper, jasper, it's yashma, jasper, and uh, the tomb of uh, his wife was made of redonite, redonite. Why? Why Alexander II had such great tomb? Because he did what? He liberated who? Christ. Russian. He abolished Russian serfdom. Two years earlier than it was in the United States. That's why he is called the Tsar Liberator. That's why he had. And uh, how did he die? Tell me, please. Alexander II. He was Bombed. He was murdered. He was killed by the party Narodne Vole on the 1st March of 1881. So he's the Tsar Liberator and he's the Tsar Martyr. Martyr. Do you know such a word? Martyr. Muchnik. So that's why. Uh, this is so called boat house. There used to be uh, the boat of uh, the first, the very first boat of Russian fleet. We call it the grandfather of Russian fleet. And the architect Beast, he built this building. And uh, when he built it, they recognized that the boat didn't fit to the building, so they had to, you know broke some windows and get it inside. And after that, architect uh, Beast was you know, asked out of the country. Because before that, he built the church on the so-called Basilevsky or Basil Island, Vasilevsky Island, and uh, the spy crashed. So it was the f second case. And after that, he, they said, him, well, thank you, Mr. Architecture, but no. So now we are going to, 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 what is that? Mint. <laughs> Perfect. Mint. Coins. The money, well, coins, coins and medals. Coins and medals. Coins and medals in Russia are made there. Steel. You know, up to, up up to nowadays. In Moscow they made, uh, they made uh, money out of paper. But paper is made here in St. Petersburg on Fontanka River. On the Fontanka River, yeah. So this is the mint and now we're going to uh, our embankment and, and it will be one of our last points. What is it waving over there? The flag, the flag, the flag. Ice uh, float or uh, sea float? Sea float. Well, fleet, actually. It's called Jack. Jack. Goose in Russian. Well, in Russian. <laughs> you know. It's called Jack. And it's a mixture of two crosses. Yeah? You see it? St. Andrew's cross, blue, like that, and blue, St. Andrew cross, blue on white. This is the flag of what? Now, my dear, 
you should tell me. Of what? Russian? Yes! Yes, we need it! Yeah! Together we can make it! Here, Russian fleet. There is a gun. Uh, that makes what? Every noon, it... Yes! Yes! Makes shot. You work there, and every noon at 12 o'clock... <laughs> oh, so... <laughs> It's very difficult for the Hermitage workers. So this is so-called Narishkin Bastion, yeah? With the gun and wind with goose or jack. These gates are called so-called the gates of death. Uh, actually, there are five gates in the fortress. Uh, scientist workers here, they detest guides who call this gate the gate of death. Well, this is because uh, prisoners went through this gate to the uh, place of execution because the most cheapest way of delivering goods is yeah you're right what were two major disasters in st petersburg floods and and fires i'm standing here this is so called cultural layer and here we have the levels of uh, three disastrous floods in the history of St. Petersburg. The first one, the second one, and the third one. It took place in 1824, yeah, the very famous. And you know even the poem that was written after that flood, which is? Pushkin. Writer. And the poet, I suppose. <laughs> yes. No. Okay, in Russian. How do you call it in Russian? Yeah. Bronze horseman. Bronze horseman. Yeah. From here, by nature blast, cut through a window to the west. Yeah? Do you remember these lines? So, uh... Now you can imagine why floods were so disastrous. It took place in November, when the water is so warm November, you know? So uh, there were a lot of victims during this flood, and it was the most disastrous. And they ended when our floods? We constructed what? Kronstadt Island, through Kronstadt Island. The dam. The dam. Yeah? How did it look like during the era of Catherine the Second? So called we call it arrow, but uh, I use another word. Um, the pit of St. Basil Island. Strelko is close How did people cross the river during the winter? From here. Look closely. On the ice, they construct And now the most tricky picture. Some activities on the river Neva in the winter. So now have a look at it. Uh, first of all, <laughs> did you mention these women? Uh, what do they do? Wash? What? Clothes. Yeah? Without any indecent machine. <laughs> I must 
So you live in a lucky time. And uh, this group of guys, what do they do? What? Train? Train what? Heat? One another? With the sticks? They fight? No? no. no? Maybe they, they build swim. something. Or they build something. Yeah, ice is a perfect place for build something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some skyscraper maybe. They play. They sing a song. Okay. Uh, give me that. Here's the answer to what they do. And why do they do that? Margarita cocktail. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> but no. <laughs> Were there any refrigerators in the 19th century? You must keep your food. Yeah? Am I right? You must keep your food. Where? Mm -hmm. And what about the electricity? Tell me, please, in the 19th century. You notice this structure here? Yeah? How do we call this flag? It's unseen now, but you know. How do we call this flag? Narushkin Bastion, five minutes ago, Jack, yeah, yeah, Jack, short term memory, okay, so, uh, we needed ice to keep food, yeah, how did we arrange it, uh, there are so called ice houses, English is very simple in our language, because how do we call, for example, for example, Patkova? Horse shoe. You know, холодильник, ледник in Russia, ice house. Yeah, very simple. So uh, they dig the hole in the ground and they put the ice below so called a level of freezing. You understand that? Level of freezing. Because now we have central heating in our tubes they lay down a level of freezing, yeah? So, uh, why is that? Because from winter to summer... <laughs> <laughs> uh, from the winter to the summer, the ice kept there by owners. They sold it to, you know, to all people in the city. It was very dangerous work, but very, you know, profitable. So they kept ice uh, before the summer, and in the summer you can go there and uh, uh, took your food in this ice house. That's why it was so important. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. So, uh, that's why it's so important to get ice in the winter. Now we get the idea, yeah? And the last picture for you. Give me that. No, no, no. Oh, it's perfect. The point, the arrow of Basilisky Island, the pit of Basilisky Island, the time being. And another one. Oh, yeah. This is our fortress. Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> oh, it's the big. It's uh, the first half of 18th century. It's uh, actually, I think, it's uh, well, period of be be uh, between Peter the first and Catherine the second. Yeah. So. Back to our beginning, yeah? You know now why... Where Peter the first wanted to build St. Petersburg in the first place? Huh? In the south. Not, not exactly in the city of Taganrog. Which Russian writer? came from Taganrog, by the way. Chekhov, or Chekhov, like they say. Yeah? Well, but he picked up this particular place. And you know why right now, yeah? So, uh, you know what the size of Peter's boots were? What was that? 37, yeah. You know the name of the guy who managed to um, repair the spire? Yeah? Telyushkin, like in Telyushkin, yeah, Peter Telyushkin, Telushkin. Peter Telushkin, Peter Telushkin, yeah. And uh, you know how this flag is called? Well, at least something. Now you can switch it off. В конце хочу сказать, что 28 числа в воскресенье вас ждет последняя экскурсия в Петербурге, называется Ленин и кресты. И начнем от Ленина, закончим <laughs> крестами. 3 ноября в Москве лекция Монферран против рептилоидов, а 4 ноября первая и последняя <laughs> экскурсия в Нижнем Новгороде. Будем гулять вокруг Кремля, расскажу про всех знатных террористов. Германа Лопатина, Веру Фигнер, Александра Ульянова, про царского ФСБшника Спиридовича, который там учился. Ну и еще про массу всего от Чкалова и до всех остальных. Ссылки на все встречи есть в описании под этим выпуском. Собственно, там смотрите. Ну и увидимся с вами в следующий раз.